good afternoon everyone welcome to the new webinar we are organizing on this month uh, this is something on glass which is our favorite subject glass is everybody's favorite uh, element of construction i think all buildings the modern buildings are having glass facades these days and the variety of glass which is coming in the market and the use of it and how to use where to use how much to use we are, we will discuss all aspects today we have very eminent people in our panel there are eight of them and it is going to be a really very very interesting session today we are going to have so i welcome all our viewers in india and abroad to this session um let me start uh, with an introduction to wfm community and to our uh, interesting speakers so let me share my screen so that you will come to know more about them so let me uh, what is wfm community wfm community is started by wfm media we uh, started it as a uh, platform for uh, you know uh, knowledge dissemination this is this is what we want to know we want to impart knowledge from the Uh, industrialist from the architects from structural engineers from civil engineers uh, from innovators everyone who is there in the industry who can just you know come to a platform and discuss on aspects which are very interesting and which are necessary for this industry to grow the construction real estate manufacturing and uh, promoting india's uh, total production as well as the growth of the industry right so that is how we come to uh, this platform we reached at this uh, innovative platform developed by us wfm community wfm media and uh, this is time to time to rethink our, the way of doing business and our strategy connecting brands and influencers and the, the aim is to have a self sustaining growing professional network and uh, for the growth of the industry so for today we have uh, architect professor charanjit shah with us he is from the creative group uh, we can call him the airport king because he has done a number of airports in the, in india he is an educationist teacher he he promotes art and architecture he he is a, a sustainable architect pro promoting a sustainable architect architecture practicing sustainable architecture his works are seen all over india so uh, welcome professor charanjit shah to the event we have architect ashutosh jha uh, there is no introduction required he was there in our earlier uh, uh, virtual event also he is from jensler india uh, he is the studio director and a senior associate he was been he had been part of a lot of uh, projects in india and in, in middle east uh, been associated with jensler since a very long time and uh, uh, he is also into practicing sustainable architecture and uh, uh, he is uh, doing he is associated with us green building council and um, doing number of innovative facades uh, and fenestration technologies and methods and teaching people around him how to go about creating you know beautiful buildings and sustainable buildings then we have architect prashant deshmukh who is the founder and the principal architect of prashant deshmukh associates he is based in pune and uh, he has done uh, when you go to his website you go and see his one nice and innovative projects uh, and he has done uh, projects for um, a lot of uh, you know high end um, uh, or godrej and mafatlals and uh, mahindras and bajaj and lnts and bombay dyeing uh you name it all industrial leaders for leading business groups and uh he has been winning appreciation for his way of uh, you know designs and projects uh from all over uh, india he is also a winner of uh, billa super award for best concrete structure uh in 2014 welcome sir and our next uh, speaker is architect harish gupta he is the principal architect so of habitat and skin architects uh, he is a civil engineer as well as an architect and also an mba in marketing management uh, his journey has been long and he has been uh, associated with various firms he has been working with various architectural firms as well as 
uh, many other corporate firms. He's got more than uh, 30 years of experience. That was what we were discussing. And uh, he's again a master of, uh, you know, innovative facade construction and technologies. Welcome, Harish. Our next uh, speaker is again a very um, eminent personal, Mr. Franz Sapol. He is from Innovation Glass, uh, an architect as well as an entrepreneur. Uh, he is from Germany. Uh, thank you for joining us from the other side of the world, sir. And he's got a bachelor's uh, uh, in bachelor's degree in architectural engineering from University of Colorado. Uh, he had been working with the glass industry for various uh, many many years. Uh, since I think 2016, he had been a part of building the types of curtain wall, and he will be talking about the very very innovative system called VS1, which is uh, which he has developed as well as his other R&D research and development programs, which he is doing at Innovation Glass. Uh, thank you for joining, Mr. Franz. And the next speaker is Mr. Avinash Gehlot. He is from Avicom Enterprises. Uh, he's again another expert, having more than uh, 25 years of experience in facade and fenestration, uh, uh, in uh, building designs and in uh, doing a lot of project projects all over India. Uh, he works for the artisans of India in a very, very different and um, uh, promoting their capabilities and art uh, and creating very Indian projects. So that is one speciality of this ar uh, architect or uh, this firm, Avicom Enterprises. You must visit his projects and see and experience. And um, our next uh, speaker is Mr. Rajan Govind, who need no introduction at all. He's from, from VES Consultants, having more than 25 years of, again, experience in uh, design. He's a uh, technology expert. So that's what all other speakers were telling me that, you know, he, he knows everything about facade. He's a dictionary of facade. So uh, thank you for joining us, uh, Mr. Rajan Govind from VES Consultant. Our next speaker is Mr. Shailesh Ranjan from Asahi Glass India. He is the head business planning and operation. Uh, he grace, uh, he uh, is sponsoring, the Asahi Glass is sponsoring the event. Thanks for sponsoring the event. And uh, uh, we, we are very grateful that such, you know, such events organized for the architects and uh, for the building construction industry as a whole is getting noticed and, you know, promoted by uh, such organization. Thanking for that. And he's an expert, technical expert, uh, he knows everything about glass, how to use it, where to use it, how much to use it, and uh, the rating systems and Griha, and uh, he is again another expert uh, in glass industry. Thank you for joining and uh, sponsoring the program, Mr. Shailesh Ranjan. So what is today's topic? Today's topic is innovative glass glazing solutions for facades, fenestration designs and technologies and its specifications. Most of the things are known, but actually people don't know uh, what is, how, where to use glass. And, you know, the designers, they go for glass, but they don't know. They, they see a lot of things. Every day there is something new coming in the market. Uh, there is coating. There is some uh, films which are applied. Now uh, people are talking about, you know, the uh, solar panels which can be used. Some glass manufacturers are also into it. So uh, the different kinds of glass where, uh, you know, who, who is manufacturing, what kind of technology is coming into India and designing glass facade, what are the key points, what are the options for glazing, what are, how to choose the glazing options that is structural, point supported, cable, suspended, where will it go and uh, what are the climatic and sustainable points eco-friendliness of glass, all these things would be discussed in today's event. Um, that's all I have the introduction for you. And uh, uh, I would um, request Mr. Shailesh Ranjan to talk about a little bit about his company and his products and his R&D uh, in the field. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ranjan. I'll just display my screen. Is my screen visible? Yes. Yeah. 
Uh, thank you, WFM, for uh, giving us this opportunity to sponsor this event. And uh, this kind of event actually brings a lot of uh, clarity in the way the product is being used, the way product is being looked at. So I'm definitely looking forward for this session as everyone else. So I'll, I'll make this uh, presentation very short, and but to the, to the context of uh, this whole uh, session, that uh, what are the different products available, which we can use in the right way. Before that, I'll just give you a very brief introduction about who we are. So we are the large, one of the leading integrated glass company uh, in India, and we are we are almost more than 35 years old now, and we are into automotive architectural as well as the consumer glass, which which completes the value chain. When you talk about the geography, so uh, we we are present across the country. If you can see the map here that uh, we have the plant located in the various locations and we have we have almost 11 plants which is uh, covering all kind of uh, glass uh, requirement for the country as well as for abroad so this one slide actually talks about the overall value proposition because a product is not important the way product is being offered is important so the base glass for everything is the float glass but if you'll see the automotive value chain is starting from the glass supply to OEM to the fitment services at the customer and when your car glass is broken, AIS is present everywhere across that uh, value chain and same for the uh, architectural glass as well where we are into the reflective glasses, mirrors and uh, up to the design and installation part which, which we call it as uh, glass experts. In between we have our uh, own uh, AIS windows as well, which, which we'll talk about uh, later. Most important thing nowadays is that uh, the certification part, because we all know that we are talking about the sustainability and how to judge that, uh, judge that sustainability. So we have uh, gone ahead and got almost all uh, uh, kind of certification, whether it is uh, uh, IGBC certification, whether it is uh, Griha certification or whether it is the environmental product declaration EPD which is very new to India but yes we have already gone ahead and got this and we are we have also applied for health product declaration which is HPD and within a month or two we will be getting that now coming to uh, the range of the product I will not be talking about any brand but what are the product which is available so that it will set the tone for the whole session that uh, what kind of product what we are talking about so when you talk about high performance glasses, so this is like a, a soft coat kind of a heat reflective glasses, which, which uh, has the different kind of categories like no silver, which uh, commonly known as solar control glasses, then solar control low E glasses is also known as single silver and solar control double low E, which is double silver. And there are different brands which is available. But the most important part is that how to use or where to use which kind of the glass, which definitely we'll be seeing in today's uh, session. But the glass itself doesn't fulfill the complete requirement unless and until it is used in the right kind of frame, whether it is the curtain glazing or whether it is for the windows. We are not into the curtain glazing and we have our channel partner, but for windows, we have our own uh, AIS windows. And how we uh, separate ourselves from any other window manufacturer is kind of the organized uh, system what we bring in from the product till the installation and the after sale services. So here, here uh, AIS not only is uh, into the glass, but also in the windows as well. In addition to that, uh, there are different type of products which is available. So again, I'm not going into the product of that. Fire rated glasses is also becoming very important. You must have heard about NVC, which is uh, mandating the requirement of the fire uh, glazed, which kind of uh, glazing has to be used in case of fire rated glasses. So we are also into it. And in addition to that, lot many interior products. So we, we have our own capability of the NPD, but I am uh, I'm not going into the detail because of the paucity of the time, but you can see few of the images for that. Most important part is that I'll stop this presentation uh, with this slide and next slide is that what we do at AIS as from our side to give it to the market is that we have our own technical services where we take the building uh, design and then we do the energy analysis with our in-house technical uh, team and we suggest what is the right kind of product which is uh, required, which is suitable. 
so how how we do that how we do that is that uh, we do the daylight analysis you can see the all kind of analysis what we do up to the rendering part so it it will give you the complete clarity on how, what kind of uh, glass to be used much before the building is actually operational so that's what we are going to discuss in today today's session so uh, that's all about it we have our own youtube channel you can go there we have too many apps which also you can you can see and a uh, few apps like where you can actually do the energy simulation on your own ais glass simulator you can actually do the with the vr app you can see the virtual reality and we we are very soon coming up with the rendering software also where you can actually render the building with you with uh, at, at your mobile itself so uh, without getting uh, uh, additional time let's uh, get into the today's uh, meat of the session uh, the discussion uh, so so thank you so much for giving us uh, this time uh, thanks mr reni so thank you thank you chailesh thank you so much for that short and nice informative presentation uh, so without wasting any time let's start Uh, with the today session and uh, uh, to i will start with you shailesh because the first question is towards you know the uh, can you please uh, brief on the importance of using the right kind of glass on facades and windows you started with that introduction in your uh, presentation yeah thank you so much so this is this is one of the most important question about what is the right kind of the facade and windows glass which should be used so whenever we talk about this uh, question normally we do a mistake that we first of all try to find what is the glass which is available and then out of that we try to select which glass to be selected in my uh, uh in in my uh, project rather than that uh, what i'll try to do in today we will try i'll try to set a process of selecting the glass that don't go and try to find any kind of product first of all try to find why you require glass there what are your requirement so requirement basically is three types you will have the functional requirement you will have the aesthetic requirement and then you will have the stability or structural requirement when you talk about functional requirement it will be for energy efficiency so where your building is what is the climate for that uh, place what is the orientation of the building what is the uh, solar path uh, at at that location all these things will tell what kind of product is required then second kind of functional requirement can be your acoustic property whether your project is at airport near airport or near railway station you will be talking about acoustic properties of those then you may have safety security or strength requirement that if you yeah. using the glass say for the shop front there you will be requiring a glass which is secure that people cannot penetrate but if you are using a glass for say a partition within your office you will be requiring a glass which will not hurt even if it breaks so you require a safety glass then you will be requiring glass for the day lighting requirement what is the light transmission requirement or the mix of all these things in the functional requirement mm -hmm. second is the aesthetic requirement so normally we see the glass on the table and we try to find out the aesthetic but we also should know that when we see the aesthetic there are two thing which comes into the picture transmission color and the uh, reflection color when we are seeing it on the table we are seeing the reflection color but when we will be seeing it at the site we will be seeing the transmission color so we should know all these uh, detail and definitely structural requirement like dead load or live load uh, what kind of loads are there and there are different tools which is available to tell you that which kind of uh, uh, glass to be used which thickness which configuration so once you define all your requirement then you go for selecting the glass that will be a cake walk for you to select any glass so if you are going to approach this use this approach to select the glass i think that all the myths which is floating around about the glass will be uh, yeah will go away thank you thank you shailesh for that nice and crisp answer and as you said the when you considering the functional point of glass security is a very important aspect considering security we can use safety glass uh, including tempered glass wire glass laminated glass 
can you uh, please brief on these different class, uh, types of glass which we can use on project? Uh, I would suggest uh, Mr. Rajan Govind to answer this question, please, sir. Uh, hello, Rena. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the safety aspect, uh, if I understood your question is correct, safety aspect for glass selection. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, glass application, as I said, has many different functionality. One of that is a safety and, and, and that give uh, protection for uh, any kind of uh, threats to human impact. Uh, safety glass, uh, there's a laminated safety glass is, is the best uh, safety glass where uh, two glass slides are sandwiched with the uh, interlayer is called a laminated safety glass. Uh, which is uh, recommended for any high uh, risk areas like uh, uh, high rise buildings or glass used on a uh, lower level like where uh, human impact uh, like a uh, uh, railing for the balconies or glass railing. Uh, these uh, location serves as comes as high risk where uh, laminated mm -hmm. safety glass is recommended. But in terms of uh, what which type of glass is called the safety glass then comes the question. Um, where uh, the two glasses sandwich is called laminated glass. That's a purest form of uh, safety glass. There are some standards would also accept a single glass uh, uh, of certain uh, thickness can also be used for a safety application. But then again, that is a case to case basis. Uh, but if you ask me for a safety glass, I would say you have to use a laminated safety glass which is widely used on like a car windshield and, and, and many other applications, not just buildings and other applications. Mm -hmm. So um, you are saying that this is the one being used uh, mostly in most of the buildings in India, uh, laminated or tempered glass are also in use or? Where is uh, laminated glass, but tempered glass, if it is used on a single monolithic glass, is not a safety glass. Okay. So whenever we say safety glass means it is sandwich of two glasses. Okay. Yeah. So uh, my next question would, is for Mr. Franz. We have heard so many uh, terms in glazing like curtain walls, structural glazing, bolt glazing, spider glazing, fin supported glazing, cable glazing and uh, suspended glazing. These are all the different terms which are used. Can you please tell me about these terms which are used and which are optional? Uh, for uh, building facades and you can talk about your innovative uh, systems also which your company had been working upon or researching on. Thank you. Um, the term curtain walling uh, is, is I would say a general term that describes all of the different variations that are possible and available to an architect to solve a facade problem. So inside that global term of curtain walling, there are several subcategories. And, and if I can begin with the first one, which is uh, just a stick system made of rectangular uh, elements. It's, it's if you could, sorry uh, to interrupt, if you could come a little closer and talk a little louder, probably. Um... Will do. Is this better? Yeah, it's better. Okay. So, so then the original uh, most common is a stick which is a rectangular aluminum uh, uh, framing, which has then uh, evolved into a unitized system. It's used generally for main, main facades of buildings, of high-rise and low-rise buildings. Uh, there are special categories inside curtain walling, which uh, are referred to as point-supported, bolt glazing, spider fittings, etc. These are referring to highly uh, aesthetic systems. Uh, they also have very, very high quality detailing attributes. Point supported refers to the glass being held in a local point as opposed to being continuously clamped to an aluminum mullion. Uh, these, these systems uh, have some inherent uh, thermal properties where because uh, of the mi minimum contact of the glass to the metal, they, they can be very, very um, high performing type of systems. Uh, they're generally used for the lobby, uh, the special area of a building, 
They are also very expensive, typically compared to a conventional curtain wall. So you have to you know, choose where do you want to spend that money. Um, cable systems uh, are, are some of the most exotic systems. They also tend to be high in cost. They are used when high transparency is desirable. Uh, these, these systems, again, they require high level of technical knowledge, experience to work with them. Cable systems, for instance, have a very, very high force around the edges, which an architect needs to integrate into the primary building structure. And, and so you need very specialized consultants to help you with these special wall types. There is a very exciting new type of genre in the curtain wall industry, which, which is being called the hybrid system. And that is where I have spent the recent past with, with our company's system, which, which Renu uh, in my introduction called VS1. It is a hybrid system. And what that does is it combines the best attributes of all these curtain wall systems that I just mentioned the standard curtain wall, the structural curtain wall, and uh, the point supported. And it brings them together in a system that has some of the higher end detailing characteristics, but it, it, it has the optimum cost uh, level of a more standard system. So these are, these are the various systems available and the terminologies. Okay, uh, that's quite interesting. If anybody is having a uh, wanting to know more about this VS1 system, please go to his website and have a look. And it's quite interesting. I don't know how um, relevant it would be for the Indian construction. It would be used over here, and uh, what is the cost of it? Probably you can go and uh, check with him uh, after the webinar, after this uh, discussion. I would uh, request uh, Professor Charanjit Singh also to answer these questions of various types of glazing systems, what we are having uh, these days on uh, building facade because your airport projects are all having different types of uh, uh, glass on their facade and different systems are being used. Could you please elaborate on this, sir? You're on mute. Please unmute. Thank you very much. Uh... Uh, for uh, this conference uh, webinar uh, on the very interesting uh, innovative subject of uh, glass. You know, it's uh, practically all these terminologies are uh, just to hold and support the glass, you know. How effectively, strongly we hold and support the glass. And uh, there are many things which come in, you know, when we sometimes we were holding the glass with some sort of a steel frame at the back. Now we need more transparent uh, visual impact in the building. And we started putting the spiders and then the support of a glass to a cable to various other things put together. Hats off to the technology that uh, the, the things are resolving and evolving in a very, very effective manner where every day and out we have some more innovation and the inside spaces are becoming outside spaces as one. And that is what uh, the today's architecture looks upon that, you know, it's so transparent and we have the panoramic view of inside and outside space. And that is what the glass is playing into. So I would say that uh, today's um, is like facade, which is more on to visualization I am not a designer, but I can visualize things. And wherein uh, my friend, uh, uh, Franz, you know, who's uh, into really doing, um, you know, all this uh, designing of facade in terms of structure and other innovations and can really make it a reality where an architect, what he can foresee, vision out, can be done in a very practical manner. So I see a lot of things which are happening and we need to say that innovation has to be beyond many more imaginations. And uh, every day we keep on learning onto these things and uh, glass is one of the materials which is so vibrant that glass steel, I think is a limit, limitless uh, attempt which can be done in today's technology, particularly in the building industry. Yes. Yes, uh, I appreciate that a lot of knowledge is, the, I mean, coming in in the industry with the uh, with such companies who are coming into 
markets and uh, asahi and uh, companies like these are imparting knowledge with various you know uh, webinars like this and uh, taking classes and through their uh, research and development and through various um, sessions which for architects and the students of architecture so uh, slowly i think over the years uh, the architects are also learning the use of all these systems uh, through these um, various webinars and other platforms so next question is uh, to mr avinash gelot uh, we have heard of many types of glazings like again double glazing and triple glazing and glazed windows and could you please brief on the use of these types of systems see when we talk about uh, windows windows uh, i would uh, before i come to the double glazing and triple glazing system it is yeah. like today is urban areas in india whether we talk about mumbai delhi or anywhere we talk about the decibel level today we are living on the road side with 90 plus decibels whereas we get inside our house is 65 plus decibels and our ear is requiring not more than 45 db as per medical terms so okay. we are fighting for controlling sound and mm -hmm. window is one of the criteria which can control sound of facade is one of the criteria which can control the sound so i feel that uh, having double glazed windows or double glazed facade should be made mandatory today in the urban areas which can give a good relief on the sound pollution which can give a good uh, on the heat parameters and the uh, weather parameters i would like to elaborate a bit on this reno yeah uh I, there are eminent architects who have been sitting here and uh, yes. recently i am in working with uh, very small projects which are like uh, we don't have uh, major consultants and major uh, expert teams on the buildings but always the confusion lies is shouldn't we decide the glass parameters before uh, we decide the facade parameters what facade is going to coming coming up what windows is going to come up so this is a bigger bigger question in smaller projects or a low budget projects or a mass housing projects because some buildings which are coming to the airport and later on complaining maybe you have to register everything on the rera before you uh, hand over uh, for the oc or the cc so uh, there is a criteria of specification of glass is most important before you finalize on the facade um can answer this problem Can you know, I, 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 a lot of challenges when we go for facade. The challenges comes in terms of the structural load, whether the building is capable to take the structural load of double glass. There are another challenge with there the window sill is made for the uh, frames which can support double glass. So there are challenges on that. So we need architects to specify these things before the facade guy comes on board. I think Mr. Rajan Govind will be the right person. Ah, uh, maybe I can answer this. actually now uh, if some of might be aware of it uh, nbc national B building code uh, is currently in progress of a lot of various uh, uh, facade code for a glazing uh, to some extent the 2016 the code has covered but still lot of uh, under working committee uh, under the development of various codes uh, the codes can give some prescription of a certain glass sizes you can use uh this will address for a mass housing and, and for a whole industry i think the code is set maybe it will come uh, end of this year probably next year it could answer uh, for wider community yeah thanks thanks thank you thanks let for me, that let me know if you can hear me renu yes now i can hear you if you could please uh, talk about these you know the double glazed windows and triple glazed windows which are there uh, in many types of glazing systems which are introduced on building Uh, so if you could before, before coming to the type of glazing or whether it's a double glazing single glazing as you dg you or triple glazing it's very important uh, for us uh, when we start designing that which climate we are dealing with uh, so first comes the climate then second comes the uh, macro climate what is our urban stretch where we are uh, you know what we are what sort of project we are dealing with are we for example the requirement for facade especially in terms of glazing will be different for hospital different for airport different for office building uh, different for all the functions so we need to first understand the our program a space program 
the site, uh, the climate we are in, uh, the client's intention, what is the intention be behind the building? Do we really need a glass? What kind of glass we need? Let's assume that you are dealing in a very urban scenario where the client suggests you to have a glass facade. For example, if you come up with that situation and you have to design accordingly, we have to make sure we have to make sure that the purpose of glazing, whether it's a double glazing, single glazing, has to be established. Uh, for example, I think uh, you know Silas conveyed this a little earlier that um, what do you want your building to do? So first you have to figure out your performance, your aesthetics, your use of the of the glass. So when we start designing it, we look at, if I can share my screen, just to illustrate my point, if you, if you, can I share my screen? Yes, please. Okay, let me know when you see my screen. So if you can see my screen, you know, um, yeah. Yeah. what you have is, is again, a large scale project at the bottom. And then what you have is a sun path diagram. So we fix our project, and I'm very passionate about doing this environmental analysis. We go through the environmental analysis. We understand the sun path diagram. We understand the orientation of your building. If your building, if your building type, whatever it is, if it is largely oriented towards north and south, then your issues are a little less. For example, I will again give you a little bit of context. Uh, for example, these two buildings. Now these two are IT buildings sitting in IT campus where the longer face of facade, uh, this is a north side. So you have facade oriented north and south side. Now, if, if the developer wants, to glass, developer wants to glaze this part, then we need to understand what is our lux level requirement inside. If, if it is office building, in this case, this is office building, then I have a central core my lux level requirement is 300, 350. I do this simulation, I get to understand how my daylight, to what extent the daylight will penetrate. Then I need to see the performance of the glass. Then I need to see what sort of performance we need. What kind of, uh, you know, what kind of energy uh, efficiency you're looking for. What sort of daylight you're looking for. But all of that depends on, again, on your subject, your, your uh, uh, climate the location you are dealing with, the client anticipation expectations, and your own design input. So if you if you design it that way, and if you do a simulation okay. at every stage, you will yeah, get you an know. appropriate answer. Thank you. Absolutely amazing uh, illustration, correct. Uh, I think all, all our uh, panelists will agree with this. If anyone has got more points, you can always pull in architect Prashant Deshmukh if you have something to say because we are always promoting eco-friendliness of building. And how can we can we use glass as a medium for eco-friendly architecture? Uh, could you please talk to me, uh, talk to us about this? So, uh, good evening, Renu and WFM. Thanks a lot. Uh, I must thank Ashutosh because he covered a little bit of, uh, he touched upon the topic of uh, the climatic suitability as far as the glass is concerned. Yes. So the eco-friendliness of glass. Uh, initially, I think Shailesh also pointed out on certain varieties of glass. So they have made my job very simple. But then uh, to put them into a point form, I think glass is a material which delivers dynamic design solutions to enable buildings to be more energy efficient by making the most of daylight. So this is very important. And as Ashutosh pointed out, I think it's always good to study the orientation and the location of the building or the project where it is going to be, and also the solar path, because that is going to actually govern the kind of, uh, you know, the light levels that you are required uh, within the space of use. Uh, many qualities make glass very attractive as it is transparent, first of all. Chemically inert, environmental friendly, there is a tremendous strength that it, uh, that it has and then it is more and more sustainable. Uh, acoustical properties are also there. They are easily available. And uh, there is a fabrication ability. Now, this, I think, is very, very important. You know, I remember having visited the factory in US uh, of the Corning. And they, 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 they have an experience center where they are really uh, showing different, different forms of the glass that can be used. The glass can be twisted into various forms and uh, to make it more 
you know, we have been apart from just straight simple panels that we are used to. So glass is one of the most favored materials across the world, I believe, with widespread application using types of glazing such as laminated toughened, uh, heat strengthened, and uh, I think various glass uh, patterns which Shailesh talked about. But please, uh, I think uh, the viewers must note that we have been using glass not only in our own tropical country, but in uh, all kinds of countries that are there across the globe. And that itself speaks about the versatility of the material. There is, I don't think there is any other material which can be used in any part of the world like that. So then the thermal comfort and daylighting. You see, the types of glasses, whether we call it a sandwich glass or there are two glasses and the acoustical properties that can be, uh, you know, by changing the thickness of the glass, we can reduce the acoustical, uh, you know, the noise levels can be brought down and the uh, penetration of the sunlight or penetration of the, of the sound can also be controlled. What a versatility this material has. And thanks to, I think, a lot of work which is done by Fr France and friends such as that, who uh, constantly think about this and how such glasses can be used to, I mean, put to use to the various kinds of, uh, you know, uh, functions that are required within the building. I mean, I can, I can, I can talk about uh, uh, talk about a project where we had to actually uh, test. It was a testing lab, and we wanted glass to be there around. And the test lab was creating a sound level of about 130 decibels. And believe you me, it was the biggest job. I mean, uh, the speakers also talked about reducing it down to 65. I think Avina talked about it, and it's really and indeed a tough job, you know, to actually get on to uh, to reduce a reduction of noise levels such as without really tempering with the with the basic material and its properties and its aesthetical senses so that is very very important and the i think the one more point as far as the environment is concerned is what happens to the glass with weather i mean whether it is snow whether it is heat whether it is rains i mean this is the material which stands out there and nothing really goes wrong i mean a little bit of treatment here and there and these things can uh, can uh, you know fetch the results that you want i think that is that is what uh, we call this uh, to be more eco friendly because uh, you know, we also have solar control and we also have uh, you know the glare that can be brought down it is not necessarily uh, whether you are on north south or east west you know obviously east and west there may be a lot of glare coming in in certain areas of the of the country and we need to treat separately the north and south and also the West. I think Ashutosh also explained very beautifully with his, uh, with his project. So this, these are some of the, of course, challenges of using glass, but that is a challenge. But if you are talking about a material, I think there is no other material which is, you know, as sustainable and as eco-friendly as glass is. And it all depends on how much effort the human being, the architects and the facade designers, they want to take, you know, or they can, they can probably bring in certain fenestrations they can bring in certain other elements by way which you cut down the uh, the glare, you cut down the uh, intensity of the intensity of the light moving inside, or maybe heat moving inside. I think that is something which can be done, which is which is being done and which can be done. I'm sure Professor Charanjit Singh will also agree with me. And the next important point, I believe, as far as this green rating stuff is concerned, uh, do you know that we can recycle the glass material? So uh, since I have already designed the factory for St. Gobin, and uh, so, sorry Asai because you are presenting today, but I would definitely welcome uh, an invitation from Asai to design a new factory for them. Uh, you know, these they, that is where, you know, we designed the glasses for cars. We designed all these different kind of glasses. And believe you me, what, a, what an in interesting exercise that we had to do to fetch all the results that were that were uh, really required, particularly when we were talking about recycling and producing the same kind of glass once again by using using a recycled material. I mean, if you take back to another sustainable material which we call as steel, I think when when we talk about a rolled steel and a re-rolled steel, there is a tremendous difference in these two properties, and that does not happen with glass at all. Now, this is one more point, which is a selling point. I believe Shailesh will make a note of this because this is a selling and marketing point for the glass lovers and glass uh, marketers, you know. And then lower carbon and sustainable construction material is what we always uh, write about the glass, that it is a, a low carbon thing. 
is absolutely uh, uh, you know has a invaluable use in the renewable solar energy solar energy technologies uh, such as photovoltaic systems and in solar thermal collectors i think i think it is an endless to talk about glass because yes. I, i believe uh, you know i i i am so much affectionate with this material and every time that it started becoming popular in india people had lot of criticisms about why glass is being used there is so much of light unlike uh, you know countries like europe or us we have lot of light available in the in the nature but then but then our approach is why can't bring that light within the building to the farthest point of the Uh, of the built space yes. and really naturally bright rather than you know using yeah. the artificial lights uh, thank you so that, much for that point. so that point. good points and you know as uh, uh, architect prashant deshmukh said uh, other architects would also be agreeing that the greatest uh, problems which we are facing in the buildings in india is heat ingress uh, acoustic problem acoustic problems and the daylight in the glare Uh, so okay, if can I, I I I just add in one uh, yes, uh, Prashant absolutely you said the correct and uh, uh, I compliment Ashutosh ji and Prashant your views are you know absolutely in uh, what is the way we we'll need to look upon the the architecture and the facade all put together you know layering the glass you know making a double glass or triple glass or any other thing is definitely required but uh, one one thing as an architect what i see as ashutosh has uh, expressed upon is that how we really see that we layer our building outside facade in a manner that uh, maybe it is a uh, envelope of the building where in uh, we say that we layer our uh, facade beside glass with the various other layers landscape layer water bodies and other things put together so that uh, the the acoustics of the building is uh, practically taken care of by the outside environment you know and uh, by passive ways i think as an architect we can reduce the impact on to the building as is as has been said that oh for this uh, topic climate we need north and south facade and ultimately west and uh, east is being uh, in protected by some other ways and also intelligent way of putting the facade mostly on to the north and west and that also uh, and not jumping into okay i want a double insulating glass or something else but can can i re- reduce this the 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 quality uh, the the in, uh, environment from outside ventilation like joseph allen steins building or lee corbusier building or anybody else we are there are certain multi layering from outside facade which really protects the hot sun to go in the harsh wind to go in and i protect and then what happens ultimately i reduce the cost on to making the glass which is more insulating or something like that the other factor which i see is when i see other lot many you know glazings where uh, like when we were doing chennai ashutosh so uh, with cost constraint you know yes, we thought okay we'll put uh, the spider glazing in the front and we'll put some other structure glazing with a more uh, strong steel support at the back to reduce the cost and so that okay somebody coming uh, for uh, uh, to the airport gets a good panoramic view and the other side okay if there are some more ventilation which are coming as a support we can do that so these these are certain things where architect makes compromises on to the cost many more things put together lastly i would only say that as an architect we we should stress upon the passive development and as you have stimulated the building and see how the daylight factor and other factors can be taken care of by the oscillation then taking care only to put more pressure on to technology and putting a like very very technologically strong gloss and not looking into the passive ways so that is my intake i think uh, we are all on the same team morning and prashant and ashutosh i agree with you fully that this passion of passive architecture will create 
the best of sustainable architecture, perhaps we will be able to create 80% of reduction in road, in air conditioning and in other things put together by way of passive development. And that is what we've done in a factory in uh, Andhra, where we layered mountains, uh, creating mounds, trees, one layer to another layer to, you know, water bodies, fountains, and then jalis put together so that ultimately when reached to the glass, this glared sun doesn't touch it. So that is what uh, I think we have to really take into also into consideration. Thank you. Mr. Rajan Govind, can you please uh, answer this question uh, on glare and uh, on noise pollution, which is having a lot of problems in India, in uh, metro cities. Can you please elaborate on that? Yeah, sure. I will touch upon uh, glare and the noise pollution, which is, comes as, as a, a functional a comfort, class as a many functions. I have a sustainable energy uh, safety and, and this uh, uh, human comfort we call as a noise insulation and uh, uh, glare. Uh, the first point I would say, explain a little bit about glare. Uh, as like many material glass is bringing a lot of daylight inside, it also brings some time uh, um, uh, good amount of lighting. When it brings a lot of lighting, it also brings some uh, uh, a negative impact of the lighting. That's one, one thing is called a glare. Um, so especially those uh, international architect and, and those works in Europe and they try to do very highly transparent glass. So they will forget that glass is a problem in, in our hot climate here. So when you have a, a glass with the 70% light transmission, it is very good. It looks very natural, but you'll have a serious glare problems here. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, glass is one material we have to be very sensitive where it is applied. So I think for, for Indian condition is very different uh, as compared to the Western countries. Even as everybody know, we put the coating on the other side, uh, unlike uh, uh, Western countries, they put a coating on, on, on uh, phase three and we put completely reverse side of a coating. So the glare uh, aspect is to be balanced between uh, what is the optimum level of lighting, not too much daylight, so the better daylight is good, uh, but it also compromise on, on, on other things. So the optimum daylighting, so I say like if you have a, a west facade facing in, in uh, uh, climatic condition, most of the in, Indian condition, maybe you should limit to six, six, say 40 to 60% daylight at the uh, visual light transmission, then you will not have a glare issues. So there are certain glass, when we look at the properties, we know it is, it is, it is going to cause a glare so that uh, by by uh, running some simulation and analysis, we can uh, make sure reduce the risk. And second aspect is noise pollution. As everyone, we face a noise pollution in, in this part of the world. Uh, but glass has uh, various glass built ups, which can give the uh, insulated glass or laminated glass, usually used on uh, hotels or, or airports. Uh, there are certain glass products can cut the glass as much as like uh, 40 decibel, which is a huge uh, noise insulation. 40 decibels, if you cut the uh, uh, noise coming from the outside, it is uh, great help for uh, very high uh, noise levels. So there are glass mm -hmm. products available, uh, even high performance, uh, uh, highly insulated and laminated glass, which address the uh, noise insulation. Okay, Mr. Harish, thanks for patiently waiting. Uh, could you please uh, talk about all these aspects of uh, glare and noise pollution? What what do you have to add on to this point? Uh, let me uh, add on the acoustics. Uh, that is the yes. sound uh, aspect. Okay. Uh, see, um, uh, anybody who wants to design a facade with, uh, I mean, like uh, an acoustic facade, I would call it. Um, and they have to, first of all, understand uh, what is sound. So um, just a very quick uh, few definitions of sound, like, you know, the speed of sound varies in different mediums. So it is zero. The speed of sound is zero in vacuum. Uh, and in insulation materials, it is 60 to 150 meters per second, like rubber. And uh, in air, it is 343 meters per second. In water, it is 1,500 meters per second. And in solids, various solids like uh, brickwork, uh, glass, and metals, it ranges from 3,000 to 6,500 meters per second. 
frequency of sound is the number of pulses per second which is measured in hertz and decibels is the loudness of sound so these are the three basic definitions that governs the sound and we have to understand that when we are designing the facade the normal mm-hmm. normal level of sound that is desired inside is between 30 to 40 decibels okay so that is what you need for uh, living in a peaceful environment in your residences or institutions or offices to function properly because we all have inherent sounds also like you have the fan you have the air conditioning and there are various things buzzing around and people talking so that also adds so the basic uh, uh, design of the facade should try to restrict the decibel sounds to less than 40 a okay. busy street outside is between 60 to 80 decibels okay so which is like double and any double glaze like rajan said that there are various products uh, and any kind of double glazing will give you up to 40 41 db of sound reduction now yeah. if you want to go beyond that then you have to go for a uh, another layer of glass you can go for triple glazing or you can go for a double layered uh, skin so you have a two layered uh, glass skin so you have an inner skin and you have an outer skin and there is a huge uh, gap in between the two skins so then yeah. and then you can get a very big, uh, big reduction like when you are designing for buildings which are facing the railway stations or a very busy highway or the airport the sound decibel can go up to 120 db also mm-hmm. so now a 40 db reduction is not going to serve the purpose because your inside sound is going to become 80 yeah. db okay yeah. so um recently i had written an article uh, on the acoustic facade and i had taken a case study of the taj hotel santa cruz at uh, t1 uh, terminal mumbai so the hotel windows are facing the runway and what the designers have done is they have taken a double glass laminate glass dgu windows on the inside and then there is a gap of about 600 to 700 uh, mm and there is a facade a glass facade again a laminated facade and what you experience inside is something like a 30 db and you are facing the runway the flights are taking off and it's a beautiful piece of work so but you that is not something that you can afford on every building so you need to be judicious and see which face of the building is facing a very noisy uh, external environment not only that also you need to understand that glass is not the uh, only thing that is transmitting sound i have mentioned to you that a material like steel is going to transmit the sound at the speed of 6500 meters per second so if you are having a lot of metal exposed to the sound and if you have not isolated the sound in the structure the metal can bring in the sound inside so you need to isolate your facade in a way that not only the glass even the metal surfaces do not bring the sound in so that entire study has to be done and then accordingly we have to design the uh, facade for acoustic treatment regarding glare i mean glare is something which is uh, uh, which has to be controlled by some shading devices we all like to have a very beautiful glass but then what happens is that when you are having a double height glass or you are having a very high ceiling you invariably bring a, a lot of light so you have to see what is the comfort level what is the eye level and that too again depends on person to person i mean like there are various people for them the glare uh, is fine but for some other people who are more sensitive the glare is too much mm-hmm. and then there are a lot of uh, reflective surfaces which uh, bounce off the light like if you have a light pool uh, i'm sorry a water pool just outside the facade it will reflect a lot of uh, light so in uh, even if you have a sun shading device you still have so glare is something which it is not just a glass that will control it it's a complete architecture so you have to uh, look at i mean like like ashutosh showed the sun path diagram beautifully right. so right. you have to see the glare in terms of a sun path diagram see where the light, light is bouncing off and uh, how much of light is actually coming in what is the intensity what kind of glass you have to use to also balance the glare so you may have to have a slightly more reflective glass if you are facing the south and like a very severe sun so i think there is a whole lot of uh, uh, designing skills and lot of knowledge that you need to have to 
understand and control the glare. Uh, Mr. Just, Avinash, do you have anything more to add to this? Who, who else want to talk, please? Uh, yeah, I'll just take uh, take a minute, not not more than yes. a minute. Since, yes, please. Uh, it was discussed regarding the glare. It's, yeah. I'll, keep it, I'll keep it very simple, that when we design a building, uh, you know, as, as we saw through the Sunpath diagram, uh, when, when I conduct, when I do a series of analysis, the most difficult part is East, east Sun, when it comes at 9 a.m., because it hits you horizontally. And again, the west side sun at 3 p.m., again, that hits you horizontally, right? So again, we don't know the site. We don't know the surrounding, how much shade we have from the surrounding, what is our subject. But let's assume that you, you get a sunlight from, you have to save the sunlight from east and west and also understand what is daylight. I'll keep it simple. Daylight is a light which you can use it inside. Daylight is not sunlight. Daylight mm -hmm. is remove the glare out of sunlight. That's your daylight, usable light. It's very simple. If you have to deal with the glare from design standpoint, there are two ways. Passive design approach suggests that you have a horizontal light cells. So if you keep the horizontal light cells, your light will get diffused or diverted and you get a daylight in. You can also keep the vertical verticals at angle depending on your, uh, you know, depending on your site orientation. The second thing which I see very often these days, it happens in, uh, it normally happens in, uh, grown economy like Singapore, UAE, but they take adaptive facade, or you know the the um, the facade which can uh, which can when the glare is up, when the sun is, if you 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 are dealing with the eastern and western side of sun, which hits you horizontally, the adapt the facade can come up and you don't get a glare and that goes out. But then again, in our context, we have to see it very seriously against uh, energy uh, conservation because we are also trying to conserve energy. We are not okay. an energy surplus country. So yeah. for me, the suggestion will be that right at the design stage, make sure that if you have to deal with the east and west side, you consider a proper light cells, which is a simple passive design technique. Blend it with your design, blend it with your elevation, you are good. Thank you. So Avinash, uh, I think you're on mute. If you, if you could add more points. And like after that, uh, architect Charanjit Shah can also please add in some more points because he's designing a lot of uh, airports and large scale projects. Probably you can add up on, add on to this. We, we had a wide discussion issues. with everybody, everyone yeah. uh, regarding yes. the aesthetics and the heat performance of the glass. Yes. That was very interesting. Uh, my another point adding to this is the major challenge for a fabricator like us is you know, uh, uh, we want all the planners, builders, architects, and uh, other community consultant community to decide what glass to be used before they construct the building. Because this adds on to the load of the building, the structural load, the structural capacity of the building. So, pehle anda ya pehle murgi kon aaya tha? So first, I would like to take it to Sairesh. Whether you want to recommend glass first or whether we like to recommend the systems first, whether it's windows or curtain wall. Even I think fans can also join in this discussion and tell what, what is uh, uh, Mr. Avinash's question. Please answer Mr. Uh, Shailesh and Mr. Franz, please. Yeah, so, uh, okay. Would you please repeat the question, Avinash, once more? No, I got the questions. So yeah. Everybody got the questions. Yeah, yes. I got the question. And it, it is a very important question. And yes, and it is very rightly put this question that uh, what we need to do. So whether we need to first design and then we go into the installation or while we have reached to the installation stage and then we are doing all the structural analysis and then we are telling, oh, this glass has to be used. And then we move, we uh, forgot about all other functionality what we have just discussed. So, so I think what uh, Mr. Asutosh has uh, mentioned, this actually puts the complete crux of the discussion that first define what your building is required much before building is actually going on the ground. It is still on the drawing board. At that point of time, you design what has to be done with the glass, what is the passive designing uh, strategy, what I am going to put. And then by default, the requirement from the glass will come. And then all the glass companies like us will be able to tell you that, okay, these are the product which is available, basis the requirement. Otherwise, company like us will come with all the folders that, okay, we have 100 of products, select any one. That is not the right approach. Right approach is what just is being discussed that we define the requirement of the building. Then these are the parameter which is coming out. 
and basis the parameter these are the product which is fitting fitting in at the drawing board itself and then then everything will get resolved i think just i'll i'll add in something in this that you know yes. in architecture we call uh, uh, does the form come first or the function come first you know and uh, somebody says oh the let the uh, form follows function or function follows form but i i i really see that form and function need to complement each other is who is the first wife is superior than the husband or husband is superior than the wife so they they are married they put together and uh, i don't know anda bhi khana hai aur murgi bhi rakhni hai so both the things are definitely required what is required that as very clearly ashutosh and prashant has elaboratedly said that when we sit on the drawing board let us all of us sit together and see that the evolution of design is to the various parameter uh, and then we start stimulation we start playing with the form with function with material and then finalize what is to be done you know that is the process where the r and d of the manufacturer the innovation and the visualization of an architect and also of uh, the technology everything put together will give you the best of the result and today is a time minded where we need intelligent uh, buildings intelligent facades integrated facades is not superficial that i am putting double window or a single window or other window but let's see that my 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 facade becomes not only energy conserver but also in energy producer so let us see how we create the facade in a manner that it becomes a production center then only a visual center so today the glass is the material particularly and along with the steel we need to see that we amalgamate many more things put together and that is what we say that let's create smart sustainable facade where we have all these put together things in a very nicely balanced manner and the intelligent role of an architect would be that how all these things are clubbed together and we can really create which is also called as eco friendly when prashant has said that uh, is a best eco friendly material so why not create eco friendly building with the eco friendly materials you know so it, it would be good in case at the end result we somebody should not say oh i have done criminality of the material sometimes when you see these glass towers here anywhere in gurgaon or anywhere in the hot climate uh, dubai and we 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 really sadly say yaar ye kya kar liya yaar west side mein itna glass kyon lagaya kyon lagaya bhatti bana rahe hain we are making a furnace and then we say yaar isme triple glass lagao as my friend has said yaar airport ke upar to mazboori thi runway tha lekin main dubai mein building bana raha hu jab itna suraj hai you have already said ashutosh i need daylight i don't need sunlight we have a lot of sun in west there is no sun half of the time in europe there is darkness in day time and you know they really take sun bath हमारी पहली स्किन काली है यार हम कितना सन बात ले लेंगे यू नो सो दैट इज सो वी नीड टू सी द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ मटेरियल वी कुड बी ग्लोबल ग्लोबल इंटरवेंशन इज गुड बट ग्लोबल एम्पावरमेंट विदाउट सेंसिटाइजिंग अवर सेल्व टू द क्लाइमेटिकल इंडियन कंडीशन ऑफ दिस सब कॉन्टिनेंट वील बी डूइंग सुसिडियल आर्किटेक्चर एंड नॉट ए सस्टेनेबल आर्किटेक्चर सो दैट इज माई इंटेक i would i would suggest mr franz answer this question your your uh, conditions in europe or frankfurt would be very different from what we are suffering over here in india during this month of march where we are all you know in the oven if you are in delhi so um, what kind of conditions and what kind of designs and forms <coughs> and materials would you would you suggest for this kind of uh, weather and eco friendly uh, construction in india yeah well one of the key things to add to shailesh uh who who you know you were focusing very accurately on the glass right uh, and what is the glass selection and what's the process of the glass selection and 
speaking to Professor Singh's uh, sort of uh, holistic, and you have to look at the whole problem, not just one part, is it's very important to evaluate what the framing system is that is holding the glass. It can make a very large impact on the U value of the assembly, not just the glass panel itself. It, it, you can get a huge detraction decrease in the overall facade performance. So this is this is very important uh, component. And then for India to control glare, there are opportunities uh, either within the airspace of the IGU mm -hmm. to integrate various uh, meshes potentially. Um, these are still passive elements or external shading blades, louver blades to block the sun. So you are able to get the daylight aspect of the facade, but you're blocking the the energy source. So, and there are some very clever ways to beautifully create a solution where the shading becomes part of the architecture, potentially making the building iconic in, in some way. So these are, these are other, uh, you know, techniques that, that can, but it is important when solving the facade problem, what is the glazing system? What are the performance you know, attributes of the overall assembly. So um, thank you so much for that insightful comment. And uh, I would now um, request Mr. Rajan Govind to give his inputs on this uh, subject. What is your view on using the glass on buildings as a sustainable material and how to check in all these, check uh, these uh, aspects of glare, acoustics, and as well as the heat? Yeah, uh, as, as everybody says, glass is a fascinating material and it doesn't get bored. So you can keep keep on using in very different forms or, or functions. Uh, it is just to be used wisely and, and, and make sure the selection and, 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 and it's the right glass for the right building in the right location uh, so that the, uh, it doesn't get upset to anybody for why, why we have done such a building. Um, so the glass is, if it is used with the with a, a right kind of a glass, glass type, a coating, and and, and if you do all kinds of a, a lot of technical works and details has to be done, and, and, and various simulations are available. There are lots of design tools. I think it's far better than before. Before we used to have some uh, used on some thumb, some uh, thumb rule approach. Okay, this building is this. Maybe use this kind of a glass. Uh, but now we can relying on a lot of scientific tools. Uh, there are various uh, helps available to select the uh, right amount of uh, type of a glass. So there is no concern with the design as such. And and though lots of products available. And I think for a, for a hot climate, the sensitive way of using the glasses uh, to cut the heat directly is the best thing is to have some uh, shading devices and, and, and architecturally how we can integrate the shading devices, which cut a lot of heat. You can have a complete glass buildings, but you can have appropriate shading. You can achieve uh, very high energy efficiency buildings. I would also suggest to uh, those viewers and, and, and those who can uh, check our, our, our video, lots of simulation tools and whatever we've been discussing. Uh, we, we have a dedicated uh, page on our website which tells about all performance simulation tools we use for not just for our glass, uh, energy optimization, daylighting, uh, high, for a lot of high rise building, we have a problem with the wind forces, so wind simulation to, lots of simulation tools we use it and that's why we, we, we uh, are able to advise on a right uh, level of glasses so i would say uh, if if uh, uh, advice is correct if the design is correct if all the uh, steps are taken care i think the end result will be good and uh, the next question is on smart glass we hear a lot on smart glass i have used this kind of glass on this kind of building and this is smart glass what is the actual concept of smart glass for india uh, is it beyond affordability in uh, when when you are using it on your projects uh, can you please comment on this this is open to all the architects as well as manufacturers uh, in this group uh, 
uh, what is smart glass and is it affordable in india and or is it beyond affordability do you use it in your projects and uh, the manufacturers approach to this and the sort of problems of unaffordability of you are seeing in india is it correct is it true uh, anyone can comment on this can, can i comment over here yes please okay see um, let let's talk about okay uh, all the performance glasses are smart because they are basically controlling the uh, uh, sun's uh, rays uh, in a selective manner and uh, uh, depending on the type of coatings uh, like you have a single layer coating a double layer coating a triple layer coating uh, then you have a double uh, uh, double glass unit you have a triple glass unit you have a laminated unit so as you keep on adding the number of layers you can say the glass gets smarter so uh, now the thing is that uh, to uh, understand basically there is a need of the project depending on the orientation of the building now if you design your building in such a way that you use the glass specifically for the exterior environment that it is facing then you have a smart design okay but what happens is that there are a lot of buildings across the world which uh, uh, the architects and the clients want to make a statement so their tendency is basically to wrap up the entire building with the same glass and you will see many buildings which are wrapped up around with the same glass so what it does is basically it takes the worst case scenario where where you need to control the sun and it takes that most expensive glass and wraps it around so uh, unfortunately the budget goes really high in that kind of scenario now the other aspect is that uh, the uh, manufacturers should play a very active role in advising about the glass right in the beginning of the project actually what happens is they come at a very later stage when uh, i mean like there is a brief uh, selection done in the beginning but then the real selections happen at a very later date and by that time the damage is already done so i'll give you an example i my first building that i designed was in 1995 uh, in uh, bandarkulla complex that time there was no reference in india i mean like I, we had hardly two buildings uh, standing in india uh, from where we could draw some reference so we had uh, all the suppliers coming to us and advising us and like you know educating us in the facade materials so while we were designing the building at that time we decided okay this is the glass size that we want to have a minimum wastage a lot of architects don't look at wastage so there is there are certain stock sheet sizes which the glass manufacturers give now if you design your grids and your glazing panels in such a way that you minimize the wastage right at the design stage you can control a lot of uh, um, cost of the facade so what happens is that uh, the facade does not become expensive and then you can select the glass as per the uh, severity of the sun that it faces so so this is where uh, we need to uh, like you know uh, control uh, this then uh, the uh, other aspect is uh, uh there's one more yeah the spandrel glass now now, now here uh, here i want to add the spandrel is possibly one of the most uh, expensive areas of uh, glazing facade and we find that a uh, lot of architects they they go for uh, the double glaze units uh, at the spandrel areas because they want to maintain a certain aesthetics so so the selection of glass or even a different material at the spandrel area can bring down the costing so there is there is a lot of advice that the glass uh, manufacturers can give at that uh, time in the early stages of project whereby uh, uh, they can bring down the cost rather than making a uh, Uh, like you know trying to sell the maximum amount of glass so and thereby what will happen is the average uh, project cost will come down and then people will start affording the glass much more so eventually the glass consumption will go up if it is used in a judicious manner uh, shailesh you uh, you are listening to harish and what uh, what kind of advice do you give to architects when they are designing and what kind of advice do you uh, give the builders when they are buying and they are restricting in the final stages of their budget that you know certain glasses put on facade and the for uh, because of the cost aspects they go for another thing which you know the architect suggests and they go for something else uh, so what kind of advice do you give to the 
uh, architects as well as to the builders uh, considering the material so i think uh, mr hari says very rightly defined what is smart glass so i'll just try to elaborate first about on the same so i i'll categorize that is smart glass into two parts one is for the energy efficiency what uh, hari sir has very uh, in very detail he has explained it that all the kind of coating which is done on the glass and uh, heat reflective glass then there is a second set of smart glasses like where you want to make some kind of statement like i will say switchable glass you want to put in your cabin a switchable glass where you have a remote you will switch it on it will become transparent you switch it off it will become opaque then you have a second type of glass let's say uh, electrochromatic glass so these glasses are are basically a kind of uh, luxury product i would say so these product are bound to be expensive and yes uh, i'll i'll give the example if you want to buy iphone we are ready to pay more but now coming to the energy efficient glass as the smart glass where we need to have a very serious discussion that how we can bring the cost down so first whether it is expensive i would say no because the comparison is from the wrong product if we'll compare a, in, an energy efficient product with a clear glass normal clear glass this will not be a right uh, comparison point 1 point 2 if you will see uh, the the way this uh, glass as a percentage of the total cost of the building what is going to be the cost of the glass if you are using a normal clear glass versus a uh, smart glass or energy efficient glass that delta will be very very minuscule and it will not even uh, uh, remove the uh, needle of the clock and as a manufacturer what we are doing if just to give you one data point in the last 10 years uh, we uh, people are going for from the single silver glass to the double silver to triple silver i don't know where it, the market will go but the cost has started coming down and now the cost has reduced almost by uh, 30 to 35% for all these double silver glasses within this uh, timeline so we are we are optimizing our our production capabilities and everything to bring down the cost so earlier earlier if you will see that if anyone is using a double silver glass it is a kind of like a luxury kind of glass which they are using now everyone can in fact afford that but my my request is that we should not look at the pure cost of the glass what we should do is we should look at the roi return on investment we are we should we should look at the cost benefit analysis and how we can optimize the further cost which uh, hari sir has again mentioned about the wastage part if we are drawing if we are designing the grid in such a way that it aligns with the production sizes so believe me this wastage cost is not earning it it is not uh, an earning to anyone it is waste for everyone so if we can minimize it it will it will save a lot of cost <clears throat> so those things those things we should we should consider and one point what i would like to say is that the spend what we are doing in a product which is 100 times recyclable multiple time recyclable and the saving what we are doing is in the electricity which is very scarce in india so so that that also we should consider when we are doing this kind of comparison of the affordability of this product okay i i think i'll i'll just add in you know because yes, uh, uh, shilesh ji you, you and harish both of you are really very very intelligently put in uh, things together and uh, i was just analyzing the cost uh, in a building uh, like large uh, commercial building or infrastructure project the glazing cost is particularly just about 7 to 8% of the total cost and uh, and uh, if you talk about uh, like you said luxury but if suppose i talk about something add on maybe it's another component of 1 or 2% 1% more which can be very effective otherwise in terms of energy conservation energy saving so that way the technology will definitely play a role where i am reducing the cost but one thing but sure which uh, uh, harish has mentioned is is like uh, when we wrap the building you know wrapping the building is very very important and uh, you said that maybe the clients uh, uh, very much uh, you know uh, 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 this thing ambitious project he want to make a iconic building or and he want to put glass all over 
So I just take it as an architect's uh, mind that uh, let's not wrap the building. It's like it's actually raping the building. We rape the building in case we put, you know, glass invariably without knowing where I'm putting it. And uh, as an architecture design element, if I am able to convince my client, like Ashutosh has said, this is how I stimulate, how I do this, and how are you going to save so much of things together. And I intelligently use minimistic approach towards using glass in a maximum manner where I think that it is becoming eco-friendly. So that is what a very, very strong intake would be where I see that I do not wrap the building. I, I, I wrap the building, but I do not rape the building. So it's what we're doing now all over, go to Chennai, go to Delhi, go Bombay, go anywhere. And I just see just glass, glass, glass. It's actually, it's glaring. It's, it, it's glared me and it is putting so much impact on a human being when you see glass everywhere and the refraction of the glass is hitting my eyes and I am actually getting colorblind. I am actually getting environmentally polluted. So indirect pollution, which is happening by using of glass all over is also, which is need to be looked after. And how do you see that you layer the glass in a manner that the visibility of the glass from outside to the naked eyes is minimistic and with the solar and the glass put together, let's see that it doesn't harm my eyes and my pollution to my environment. So that is another intake. I think let's become a little more conscious than cosmetic. So once I become a little more conscious in use of a material, definitely the best use could be where I create an ecosystem where I say, yes, this is environment friendly material and application both together creating an environment friendly environment. So that is what my intake is. So uh, thank you so much, sir. I think we are very close to the end of the session. Before that, we have a few questions from the audience, um, which I would like to ask. The first question is for AIS uh, Asahi. Uh, Asahi is offering, are you offering bulletproof glass? That's one question which has come from the audience. Uh, yeah, so uh, the right terminal is a bullet resistant glass uh, so it is uh, nothing can be bulletproof at some point of time everything will break yeah it is a bullet resistant glass so uh, the it ha yes AIS is making bullet resistant glass but we need to understand what kind of uh, uh, resistance what is looking at so normally as per the standard it is uh, from BR1 to BR6 or BR7 in fact also which is a different type of uh, the ammunition the gun and uh, the same two types in that is splinter and non-splinter. So if, if that is uh, kind of uh, but uh, these things has to be specified. Okay. There is another question from Anas Siddiq. Uh, this is regarding the gla glass uh, deflection criteria. Uh, what are the limits of deflections in glass? Because of curtain walls, we only design sections with deflection uh, criteria. We just ignore the glass. Either it can take those deflection. Can they take the deflection when the glass is used as curtain wall? This is one question from Anas Siddiqui uh, on the limits of deflections of glass. Maybe I can answer this. Yes. Sorry. Uh, can I answer this? Yes, please. Uh, okay, the, the glass deflection usually is not well defined. Several courts do not specify the deflection criteria, but however, uh, is controlled by the framing deflection. If the glass is supported on the frame, if, if it is followed the framing deflection, the glass deflection will comply. Uh, as uh, there are some uh, courts or maybe a thumb rules, they can consider uh, glass allowable or a uh, safe deflection can be considered as a span over 90 or a span over 60 or maybe in sometimes like maximum of 25 mm uh, mid span deflection mm -hmm. but sometimes the large glass panels can uh, safely deflect 50 to 60 mm at the uh, central span so there is one more question from Colin Campbell is dynamic glass 
is the future can anyone answer this uh, i can answer this please yes uh switchable glass dynamic glass or different terminology maybe it is coming to the same uh, the glass which can uh, change the switch of the button uh, i think it will be the future of the glass it is just uh, started coming there are, uh, is is very very expensive now as we have seen uh, uh, sometime after some time it, uh, it will become affordable uh, but there is a, a future for this glass we can we can potentially see it becoming a affordable glass uh, can i add one more thing on this yes actually, please actually please. switchable glasses there since a very long time uh, the first time i came to know about switchable glass was from viracon was in uh, around 1998 so it's not that uh, it is something new it's just that it was fantastically expensive and it's still expensive yes and if i can add uh... you know one of the things for the future i i see we see is that the facade is going to have to become more high performance um to to help mitigate climate change i think we we as a society the government the architectural community uh we have to come together and and have an honest conversation about the impact of a building in into the built environment and there are tremendous opportunities to have the curtain wall uh be a real contributing factor to mitigate of uh, the carbon impact um and dynamic glass is one of those uh features those technologies that as as it, it has been around a while it is coming out now more and more manufacturers are are working with it um we see the facade becoming a dynamic uh element of the building as opposed to a static element right now if you put very high performance coatings on a piece of glass that's it you you know it's going to always perform to whatever the coating selection is that you made but if you if you create a dynamic aspect of the facade uh potentially you know elements that move uh to shade and unshade to to change the the actual thermal performance of the piece of glass throughout the day or night those are the real opportunities and and then you start making the building uh, a real contributor potentially even generating the power that it needs to to run so lots of lots of real future uh opportunities with this technology uh also another thing is that if you want to really use switchable glass uh you can you can still afford it make it as a backdrop for your advertising at night and it will uh, it will earn a lot of advertising revenue and it can uh, virtually uh, like break even in two or three years thank you so much i think we have many more questions coming in there are five or six i'm already seeing it on the screen because of the time limitation we have to close it over here now i'll be forwarding all the questions on the group uh, where we will be discussing on all, all these questions from our audience and we'll be posting it on our website as well as on social media uh, where we will find more questions on this panel discussion thank you all for joining in and thanks for your time the you. valuable inputs on this panel discussion on glass and glazing uh we will be seeing you soon again on another discussion probably uh in the coming months uh i would uh, like to invite you all again for the discussion and your articles valuable articles val valuable contribution for the website as well as for the wfm community please advise you all are experts there are so many young architects on this uh, uh community who wish to know more about the use of glass and glazing and all other aspects on buildings and designs and technologies and you know the engineering aspect as well thank you for so much for joining thank in you. uh thank you very much